Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you the game played between Magnus Carlsen and Wesley So from round 10 of the Singfield Cup in St. Louis. We joined the game after 16 moves. Magnus had white pieces, Wesley So had black. The opening was a Gioco Piano, which was a bit of a surprise since Magnus has almost exclusively played 1d4 in this event. So here it was Magnus's move. He played a very interesting move, knight c4, which forces the exchange of queens, since d5 pawn is now attacked twice. Wesley played bishop takes c4, and on first glance, it seems that black is completely fine out of the opening, and the computer seems to agree. White has these damaged pawns on the queen side. However, Carlsen has some ideas in this position. Wesley played b6, and this was probably what Carlsen had hoped for when he played the knight to c4. Black could have instead played his rook to c8, but I think Carlsen was then planning to maneuver the knight to b3, which uh, will eventually force Wesley to play b6. So with the move b6, this gives Carlsen a target to work with which is the backward B pawn. And from here on, Carlsen played a very instructive game. Everything seemed to just flow naturally and logically. So Carlsen knows that the two main plans are to pressure B6 and to occupy the D5 square, ideally with his knight. So he plays knight to H4, trying to realize his plan. And of course, with the knight on D5, that would put some extra pressure on b6. Wesley played rook a d8, f3 from Magnus, g6, just stopping knight f5. So Magnus creates a new route for his knight. Knight h5 from Wesley, king f2. Now this was the moment where Wesley started to lose his way in this game. He played knight c6. So the knight has nowhere to go to, and it's walled off by these double pawns. Instead, knight c8 seemed more logical, where black would eventually pressure c4 and e4 with knight d6. And after knight g2, knight d6, knight e3. And now with the knight on d6, it's possible to break with f5. And note that black's active play doesn't afford white enough time to pile up on the b6 pawn. So note that going back a few moves, it's not possible to defend the h6 pawn with king g7 or king h7. If king g7, then knight c7 wins material. And if king h7, then g4, with knight f6 soon to follow. But back to the game, in the game knight c6, bishop c1 is a good move from Magnus. Wesley defended uh, with king g7, and now bishop to e3, excellent maneuver from Magnus. White's bishop is now ideally placed, in case b6 were to fall, because then the bishop would be eyeballing the c5 pawn. Wesley played rook captures rook. So perhaps it was better to play knight e7 or even knight to a7, both with the idea of going to c8. Knight e7 perhaps a little better than knight a7 since it gives black more flexibility with the option of f5. However, playing the knight to e7 would be kind of admitting a mistake on black's part. Instead, we see rook takes d1, and this is an inaccuracy from Wesley because it's better to have both rooks in the game to make it easier to cover that weakness on b6, and we shall see this later in the game. So with hindsight, rook e6 uh, would be perhaps better as it attempts to avoid the problems faced later in the game. It does, however, leave the d-file uncontested 
But in the game, we see rook to d8 from Wesley. Carlson brought the rook over to b1. And now we see the problem of trading rooks. You can see that black's rook is caught in an awkward pin with the knight defending it at the moment. So these pieces on the queen side are kind of paralyzed. The computer thinks that black is still holding on, but the margin for error is small. So if black would have refrained from trading rooks, then this knight would be free to move, but uh, that is not the case here. Magnus played knight g2. The next few moves from Carlsen come very naturally. The plan is now to put that knight on d5. So Wesley played knight to f6, the only piece that can really move. King to e2, and now knight to, eight, uh, knight to e8 was another inaccuracy from Wesley in a very difficult position. Although passive, better was to play knight d7. But in the game, we see knight to e8. Carlsen continued with bishop to f2, and now knight to e3. So black's idea of pressuring c4 doesn't quite work since white always has king to d3 in reserve. And the pawn on b6 is way more valuable than the pawn on c4 if a trade of pawns were to occur. Knight to d5 is also coming, so Magnus has a better position. Knight d7. Knight d5 from Magnus. So Magnus makes it look so clear and logical. His game plan of eyeballing the b6 pawn was a success, and it's just a joy to watch him orchestrating his pieces, especially the knight and bishop maneuvers. Wesley played rook to b7, so for the moment bishop takes c5 is prevented. King d3 from Magnus, and here it's interesting to play c4, but after king d2, Black then has to defend with knight c8, and this seems uh, too passive. So Wesley played f5, hoping to open up some lines for counterplay. Magnus took the opportunity to play c4, fixing that pawn. And now rook f7, which is the only try for black in this game. Because if black waits, with say g5, then after bishop e1, let's say king f6, bishop c3, this is too much for black to handle. There's the pressure on a5 and e5, in addition to the rook swinging over to f1, and this is a great position for white. So rook takes b6, rook takes f2, rook takes d6, after the series of exchanges, white is not only up a pawn, but he has a very dangerous pass d pawn. So let's see how the game continued. Wesley did his best to defend, but unfortunately here he made a crucial blunder. He played king to f6. King to f8 would have offered more resistance, making it difficult for white to queen the pawn. After rook e6, rook b4, black is basically reminding white that this a pawn is running as well. It will be difficult for white to queen with just his rook and the pawns. Would be nice if his king can join in as well, but then these pawns start running. So this is complicated. Instead, we see king to f6, a blunder which loses the game rather quickly. Magnus played pawn to d6. The king is completely cut off from defending the promotion squares, and Wesley so resign in this position. A possible ending would be rook d4, e5 check, king f5, d7, a4, g4 check, king f4, e6, a3, rook f7 check, e7, followed by a promotion. 
So Magnus is finally rewarded with his first victory of the tournament, and he made it look so clear and logical. He now joins Nan, Karyakin and Pomyachi in second place, half a point behind Dingli Ren with one round remaining. I hope you enjoyed this game. Do consider subscribing to the channel for more chess content. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.